Hi, Holly. Oh, uh, okay. How are you, Kathy Myers? I'm well, Holly. How are you? I'm well. Good. I miss seeing people in person, and you're one of them. That's nice. Thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. You don't realize how important it is, though, um, like having the kids back in the afternoon. It's just no, every you time I want to cry. <laughs> And then you realize like how much you've been missing. Yeah. Hi, Lauren Ridgeway. Hey there. I um, thought this would be like a webinar again. <laughs> Did we do it as a webinar last time? Well, maybe not this one, but the board, everything has been. So like I can sit on my couch. Oh, please. Uh, you can still do that and you can turn your camera off and whatever. Yeah, this is definitely meant to just at some point we have to stop uh, taking too much advantage of Jacob's time. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah. That's good to see everybody. <laughs> Want to give it one more minute, Alan? Sounds like a uh, like a plan. Okay. Sounds like we have a typewriter going. Alan, you're going to share your screen on this one too, right? Yep. I'm okay. all set. I already have it up. Okay, great. You might not know this, but I like driving. <laughs> Good. It's Good. Um, all right, everybody. Welcome. It's so nice to have you. It's our um, third public uh, information forum. We will be recording this and also placing it on our website. Um, thank you very much. Looks like we have a couple of staff. We have a few staff members and a couple of parents. Thank you so much for joining us. And um, we will get going. Um, Alan is going to lead the presentation, but we're also open to, um, he'll have some stopping points to ask some questions and um, folk, uh, Pat, Kathy Myers and Mike Herforth um, and I are also here to to support um, the answering of any questions or sharing of information. Okay, um, this presentation is from starting from segment interim to current. There are things that have changed since then, but uh, it's uh, information for us. I'm gonna share my screen. I should be up now. Somebody give me a thumbs up. All right. Um, I want to make it so I can see everybody still. All right. Um, welcome to the April uh, 21st, uh, 2021 budget forum meeting. Uh, this, these screens were shared at the uh, uh, board meeting, uh, second interim. One of the things that is required by law is we have to do a first and second interim. We did a second interim uh, uh, based on the numbers as of January 31st, uh, presented to the board on the uh, second Tuesday of March. Uh, and uh, the a description of the purpose and the process that takes place with a reviewing of the uh, SCO reviewing our budget and certifying it at the end. Uh, one of the things that is required is that we meet the minimum of 3% reserve at the end of uh, the two sequential years. A breakdown of our 2021 general fund uh, revenues as of part, um, January 31st. It has the LCFF uh, sources, the Federal Reserves, 
also uh, broken down uh, how much was for the ESSER, the GEAR, and the COVID-19 funds we received in this year. We also have the amount for the state revenue, which included our learning loss mitigation funds. And then we also have the local revenue, which also which includes the Recon Valley Partnership. Total revenues came to $42 million. Here's a slide that shows you a breakdown of uh, how the revenues are broken down in a different uh, perspective. And you can see that the bulk of it comes from the LCFF calculator. Uh, this is a breakdown of the combined general fund expenditures. You'll notice that between salary and benefits, including uh, certificated classified and benefits uh, for all employees comes to 84.1% of our total budget. We have 7.3 from materials and supplies, services and contracts are at 8.5%. Total expenditures exceed the revenues that, we re that we're receiving this year, which means we are deficit spending. Again, here's a breakdown. If you take the three largest parts of the pie, that's our benefits, classified salaries and certificated, which comes to 84.1%. District reserves and deficit spending. One of the things I have learned is that it's okay to deficit spend one year, um, but knowing that it cannot continue on an ongoing basis, uh, that's pretty much what it comes down to. Uh, you don't want to be deficit spending uh, two, three, four years. You need to um, address the structural deficit if it continues to do that and you will have audit findings in the future. This is a spreadsheet that shows you the uh, breakdown of the funding and funding balance plus the estimated amounts as of uh, my calculations uh, on 131. Uh, you'll notice that we have a slight increase in the 21-22 uh, but then after that, we continue to do the deficit spending. Another way of looking at the general fund change in fund balance, again, the estimated in 21-22 has a slight increase of a say, um, surplus. Um, but again, it starts to have a deficit spending, which gets worse and worse as we go. So it's something that the district and the community and the uh, um, everybody involved has to take uh, uh, reasonable conversations to control the spending. Uh, what this is to show that um, we have to do an AB 1200 anytime we do the um, salaries or benefits or anything that goes to um, uh, Salary benefits are, uh, I can't say anymore. <laughs> um, but the reserve has to maintain a 3% reserve at the end of three years. And uh, our district has been very fortunate to have the reserves to maintain that, but it cannot continue forever. So it needs to be addressed. These are things that I did share with the board on January, oh, with the January 2nd interim. This is the 2021 enrollment summary. As of February 21, you'll notice that if you look at the enrollment in May of 20, compared to the enrollment in February 21, which is what, eight months later, the enrollment has um, dropped almost 250 people, or 250 students, pardon me. Um, Next is the multi-year projection. This is hopefully the last year. I only do it for one multi-year projection. I plan to do two multi-year projections um, with each presentation. One will be uh, the one that is required showing all funds that we receive, including one-time dollars. Uh, and then also one that does not include the one-time dollars so that we don't have a, a masking of a structural deficit. 
We'll notice that our deficit, our deficit spending in 22-23 is 671 and then 1.1 million in 23-24. Again, this is numbers from January. Multi-year projection is a way of finding out if we're going to be uh, making the reserve a 3% at the end of uh, the two subsequential years. Um, one of the things based on this stuff is should say second interim instead of first interim. I don't believe I missed that. <laughs> I'll be honest, I'm not perfect. Um, challenges for Rincon Valley, which were shared with the dev with the uh, board, is that the governor proposal is just a proposal. That we have a cola only environment. We have in 21-22, we have a 3.84% COLA, and we call that a catch-up COLA because it's part of the COLA that we did not get in 2021. So if you take the 2021 COLA we did not get plus the COLA we're supposed to get in 21-22, it comes to 3.84. The COLA that they're projecting for 22-23 is 1.28. And in 23-24, it's 1.61. Uh, I'm hoping those changes with the May revise with the governor. Uh, we have declining enrollment. I'm hoping that it starts to flat out so that uh, enrollment will not go down, but start to go up in our area. State budget and the economy, we don't know about, but um, since January, the economy is doing much better than predicted. So I'm hoping that uh, I am pleasantly surprised with the governor's revised uh, budget proposal in May. Pearls and impact to cash flow, I am still watching like a hawk. Um, uh, we are getting hit with the deferrals now and actually in June, we will get no money from the state, but we will get our money in July. Surge and purse costs are going up. Uh, we did not know what they were, but in the last couple of weeks, we have been notified that the SERS and PERS rates are going up. And in the out years, they're going up dramatically from like 21% to 27% for uh, PERS alone. Alan, can you explain what SERS and PERS are? SERS is the, the, the teacher's um, retirement system, and the PERS is the employee's retirement system. And these are the costs that when an, I'll, use, I'll use classified where an employee pay, a full-time employee pays 7% of their salary in the district pays on behalf of the, of the employee somewhere around 20 to 21% on their behalf to their STRS program or PERS program. Escalating special education costs uh, are a thing that happens all the time. It is not something that is very, very much in our control. Uh, the students come first and uh, by law, by statute, we have to support our children uh, in special ed education and, and we do very well here in uh, Rincon Valley in doing supporting the students. Next steps, uh, the governor's may revised budget proposal. Believe me, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, th this was shared in January or in, in March, the additional one-time dollars. There have been others that have been uh, passed since then. I will be talking to you a little bit later. Uh, we don't know if the COLA is gonna be changed. I'm looking forward to the hoping that, you know, I can always hope it changes in uh, May will make it easier to uh, come closer to balancing the budget. Uh, federal one-time dollars, uh, since March 16th, there have been a few more and I'm gonna to talk to some slides in the future about those. Uh, continuing the review of staffing due to enrollment changes, we are always doing that. We're working on that uh, continuously throughout the year, um, if there's an influx of students or a decrease in students, we have to um, work within those enrollment uh, projections uh, for the out years. Um, right now, I'm in the middle of uh, budget development. 
Uh, and of course, every year you do have collective bargaining. And the 21 to 24 LCAP development is ongoing as we are doing the build, building of the budget currently. Now the exciting stuff, more information coming up now. Pandemic funding from 19, 2019 to 2024, one time, all one time funds, but this is stuff we did not have, no information at the uh, um, second interim. Now that we have the 21-22 in-person instruction grant money, we have expanded learning opportunity grant money. We haven't received it, but we have a, a dollar number that we are supposed to intend to receive. We have it for the federal, we have for the uh, ESSER 1, ESSER 2, and the ESSER 3. We have dollar amounts for them, um, but we have not received the money yet. Uh, and I will show that money and I don't know if it's the next slide or, not, or a couple. Hey, Alan, can we just pause for a second just to see yeah. even on all the slides, the second interim piece of it, if there's questions or comments or if there's any, just to make sure that that was a lot of content. Yeah, I, um, I have my screen up. So if somebody wanted to put up their hand, I can see that. Or you can jump in uh, and ask me a question at any time. I can go back to the slides that you want to talk about. I yes, see that. Yeah. Um, so I was just curious on you, you. You said you were watching deferral percentages. What was the deferral? That you're the talking deferral about? is the state promises to give us a million dollars uh, every every month to fill our bucket or to, okay, we have property taxes, but it's not enough money. So the state mm -hmm. will fill it up and say, okay, we're gonna give you a million dollars a month. And then uh, they come along and says, well, we owe you a million dollars, but we're gonna defer it. We're only gonna give you 20%. So in February, in February, they gave us 55% of our dollars that they promised. And in March, April, May, they only gave us 30% of our dollars that they promised us. And then in June, they're giving us $0. But in July, they're going to give us 100% of our June dollars. And then to August, September, October, November, we get those monies. Okay. And then um, the multi-year projections that you were uh, showing, does that include the collective bargaining agreement uh, proposals that are on the table now, or is that not including? The multi-year projections I showed for uh, second interim do not include any bargaining agreements in it. Okay, so that doesn't include any of those changes. Okay. Right. And as of right now, so I know you're waiting for the May numbers to come out. So as of right now, the COLA was is 3.87, but that's still a projection. That's not final. That, that's true. It okay. is a project. That's the governor's projection. Uh, he can change it uh, at the budget's, the governor's revision. I also, then the legislature and the governor will hash it out and figure out what COLA they want to fund. Uh, it could be higher, it could be lower, it could be the same. It's usually pretty close by the time you get to May, except for last year. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I don't see any other hands. It's nice driving. Okay. Uh, so I got through this screen one time funds. What I'm showing now is the state pandemic funding. First two columns being the state bill and the learning loss mitigation. Those funds have already been spent. Um, they had a due date of being spent in 2020 or the end of the end of June of 2021. So we made sure that we spent those monies first. Now we have state funds of in-person instruction grant, which is this one, and the expanded learning opportunity, which is this one, which has a uh, paraprofessional um, resource code that we have to spend 10% of this on paraprofessionals. Um, also, you'll notice that we have a little bit more time than just a month to spend the money uh, under in-person instruction. We have until August 31st, 2022, and the Expanded Learning Opportunity Grant, we have until August 31st 
of 2023. And I know that there is a, uh, a uh, committee that is working on a plan on how these funds will be used to uh, best support the students in the school district. Uh, any questions about the, the state pandemic funding? Moving on, we have the federal pandemic funding. All these numbers we did not have at second interim that we have now. Um, the ESSER one, two, and three are the ones that I wanna focus on. These are the ones that we have a committee working on figuring out how to best um, support the students with these funds. You'll notice the ESSER one is, we have until September 30th of 2022. ESSER three, ESSER one, yeah, ESSER two, we have until the 23rd, 2023. And ESSER three, we have until 2024. And this reason why it's September is because the federal government uh, uh, is structured that their budget starts on October 1st and goes to September 30th. Unlike the state where theirs is 7 1 to 6 30. Any questions about the federal? Yes, Beth. Yeah. So the ESSER funds that you're talking about, what are the restrictions there? What is that to be used for? Um, it depends on which ones. The ESSER one was, was fairly restricted to like PPE and software technology. Mm -hmm. um, the ESSER two and ESSER three were more flexible. Um, but the, the basic premise, and I do not like this term, but this is the term that they're using is learning loss mitigation. So things for thinking about the future, that's why it extends three years out. So what, what social emotional supports, tutoring, um, summer school intervent, you know, what kinds of supports can we provide to our families and well, mostly our students and also staff, right, for professional development and trauma-informed practices, you know, all of those different plans that we need. So it's a lot, ESSER 2 and ESSER 3 are a lot more flexible. Okay, thank you. Next screen. List of big ticket items that we used in 2021. That doesn't mean we won't use them again in 2021-22, but um, we, we spent a lot in getting our schools ready for uh, opening up on May 3rd. We've uh, done a lot of spending money uh, making it so that kids were successful uh, working uh, from the home. Um, with the, the software, the Chromebooks, the laptops for teachers and principals, uh, the PPE to make things there as safe as possible, um, the transportation, the food services, everything. These are big ticket items that we spent a lot of money to make it so that our last, our current year is successful as, as much as possible until the kids get back into school. Okay, 21 to 24, monitoring each resource code. This is something that I do is with the help of my staff is uh, we're reviewing budget versus expenditures to make sure that everything is, we only spend $1 for every dollar we bring in. It's not to spend more. Uh, we're reviewing uh, every Amazon report, every Amazon order, every Office Depot order, every requisition, every PO. These are all reviewed. Uh, we're making sure that we're reviewing uh, expenditures uh, all the way down the line from uh, salaries, benefits, overtime, everything is reviewed and updated um, at budget time, at a first interim, second interim, these are things that go on all the time. The other thing that's going to start going forward is going to have two different multi-year projections. I did mention shortly a little before was that We'll have one with everything in it, and then we'll have one that does not include the one-time dollars so that we don't hide a structurally deficit um, district budget. I think it's important, and uh, I, I, know, I know it's important. It's something that other districts are doing also. The quarterly reports to state and federal agencies, they go through me. I do the reports on a quarterly basis. It's Four one seven one ten one 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 for uh, the state and the federal. When I do the state, is to report what we spent. 
the federal, I report what we spent, and then they send us the money. So it, it's important that these reports are done. I have like five days from the first of the month to get them done. Uh, this is where I turn this over to Tracy. Yeah, so, um, and Mike and Kathy can chime in. Um, so the LCAP is the Local Control Accountability Plan. Um, and we are at the beginning of another three-year phase. This is an opportunity for us to gather stakeholder input and from parents, um, from students, from staff, um, from administrators. What, what do we want to make sure that we really concentrate and focus on in the next three years to improve our student outcomes? Um, right now we are creating um, a math goal um, very so that we can focus specifically on math, not that we're not going to focus on other things, but also on an equity and um, social emotional support goal. Um, knowing that there's lots of different things we're going to do in between um, and together and joint with that. But for the LCAP, that's where we're, we're, we're focusing on. Um, part of the, the reason why we talk about the local control accountability plan within the budget uh, discussion is that the budget um, has to align with your LCAP goals. So part of Alan's job is to create um, funding sources for the different activities um, and steps that we're planning on taking. Um, and it'll be especially tricky this year because we also have to think about how we're, you know, these are kind of ongoing dollars. And then there's also the um, uh, expanded learning opportunity grants. And then I think we're gonna have to come up with a plan for that ESSER 3. They haven't given us the template yet um, for that ESSER 3 dollars as well. So we kind of have to have a three year um, learning enhancement plan um, for our kids. And so um, we're expecting um, that to fall into place as well. Um, lots going on, a lot different than things and how we've had to present in the past. We were supposed to do the three-year LCAP plan last year, um, but it was postponed um, due to um, all the other reasons, the same reason why everything else was postponed. Um, and in many ways, it's, it's a great time to be really thinking about what what matters most for our students coming back when we come full in person um, in the fall. Um, and then Mike and Kathy, um, I'm hoping you could share a little bit about how the expanded learning opportunity grant discussions are going. Uh, yeah, sure. So Kathy, please just jump in at any time. Um, the started a committee of uh, some staff members to go over the uh, information about the expanded learning opportunity grant. And just so everyone's clear on here, this is money that is being uh, provided to school districts to help provide programs and strategies um, to implement across the next two years in the school district um, to be provided for all students. However, there's a priority that districts need to prioritize money for English language learners, foster homeless youth, uh, socially economically disadvantaged, um, and intervention for students who are showing um, a decrease or less. Tracy was saying earlier, kind of the phrase is a learning loss. Um, so we put together a committee and we met probably around a month or so ago, brainstormed some ideas, and then Kathy and Tracy and I kind of combined those ideas and uh, we met with the committee again yesterday and pared that down and actually put some um, estimated dollar amounts to the different programs that we would like to consider putting in place. Um, and to kind of go along with what, Kate, what Tracy was talking about with the LCAP, um, the expanded learning grant money coincides with the LCAP because obviously some of the goals need to relate. However, just so people understand, this will come to the board as a separate document for an action item. It has its own plan that has to be submitted to the state. So our timeline is to finalize that plan and have it go to the board um, at the May 11th board meeting to um, take action on, and then we can submit that plan to the state so we can begin to receive uh, funding to implement those programs. So Kathy, please add anything else that I may have not mentioned there. Sure, good job, Mike. Um, so just a couple of the items that we have on there, we're looking at, you know, summer programs, possibly in the fall, some after school, more of academies. We're looking at different software um, intervention tools and possibly adding additional staffing 
to different school sites. So lots of great ideas um, covering all of our different student subgroups. Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned the staffing. So one thing that we should make sure people are clear about is one of the um, stipulations or requirements of this money is that at least 10% of the money that we receive as a district must go towards hiring classified paraprofessionals. Perfect. Thank All you. right. Did you want to add anything, Kathy? We're good? Okay. Um, any questions? Okay, I think Alan, we can keep going. Okay, my turn again. Okay, 21, 22, building a budget. When I first started this, it was like three pages long and Tracy gave me some advice to make it more of a big picture. So here we go. Uh, budget development is working with SCO to get the systems updated, opening up a model, meeting with them on uh, on Zoom with uh, position control, budget development, uh, um, and how, how to uh, get yourself prepared before you even start on a budget. Then you take uh, position control, which is 85% of our budget, obviously. And then you go build your work calendars, the individual positions, the salary schedules, uh, working with uh, uh, how many teachers you need, how many janitors you need. It, it, it comes down to how many you need in each position. And you set it up in a position control. Then you go to step three, which is to figure out how much money you're gonna receive or revenues. <clears throat> um, I have six uh, LCFF calculators to work from. I have to go and figure out how much we're gonna get in parcel tax, how much we're gonna get in lottery money how much restricted lottery money, how much we're gonna get from special ed, how much we're gonna get, um, um, oh, I, I forgot. <laughs> but there's a, there's a lot of different revenues and there's like 21 different codes, uh, how much funding you're going to get. But the big one is the LCFF calculator and there's one for the district and one for every charter school we have. Uh, so then after I figure out what the revenues are and I got my position control, I go and upload it into the system in my model and I go and says, okay, now I got my budget development set up for figuring out what the expenditures are. So then I run uh, expenditure reports uh, with a history of the last three years. I've done four years this year because uh, this, this year has been such a uh, different year. And uh, I run it by fund, I run it by resource, I run it by man, uh, management code. Um, then I, I have my plans, I've already gotten printed out. I'm going to go and meet with uh, Denise at RVP. I'm going to meet with Kathy and Special Ed. I'm going to meet with uh, Jacob in transportation, Mike and Kelly with curriculum, Allie with food, Seth with uh, extended care, and get their input in the budget. Uh, I, I need to have them for the buy-in to make this budget work. Then uh, one of the things that I want to show is the big picture of uh, there are 10 funds. It's not just one fund. So you have, you know, 10 funds, five charters, extended care, you got cafeteria, then you also have the facilities and capital facilities that you work with uh, on an individual budget. And those individual budgets have to also be in the positive when you build the budget. Um, then you have uh, you have to submit your uh, budget for review for the public, and you have to submit it to the board for review, and then uh, with feedback from the board and feedback from uh, the public, uh, then you present uh, the final uh, budget, uh, the second board meeting in June for approval. The day afterwards, I submit everything uh, to SCO for review. And then they will actually do the technical side of uploading the budget as a final um, official budget, and we can start spending the money. Um, any questions about building a budget? Next, questions? 
I turn it over to you, Tracy. Alan, do you want to stop stop screen? So I will stop sharing. Stop sharing. Thanks. Okay, so we shared a lot of information and we're just opening this up for questions or how we can be helpful to you in understanding um, our current budget as best as we know it right now. We're going to have a lot of information in the next few weeks with the May revise. Um, me again, I guess. Um, I'm just really curious to understand again um, how how do you get to your enrollment projections, Alan? Like, what is that based on? Uh, a lot of information is shared, uh, well, is shared by Tracy and Mike, um, getting the enrollments uh, with the history of what has happened in the past, mm -hmm. what we are currently doing, and what the uh, current projections are in the out years. One of the things that I learned real quick was, uh, the number of students that are leaving in eighth grade or sixth grade, depending on if you're doing charters or just uh, the district, is how many kindergartners are coming in and how many sixth graders are going out. If it's going down, mm -hmm. your enrollment is going down. That's it. And we're in a very difficult uh, time in predicting. Um, right. we, just, we monitor, I look, literally look at the enrollment every day to see who's coming in and who's now enrolled for next year. Um, we're hoping that information about school actually being open <laughs> again and, and being in full in person for next year will, will make a difference. Mm -hmm. We do have very difficult time predicting what the impact of the fires and evacuations and the economy and the housing market have on, on families. Mm -hmm. Um, we hear bits and pieces there, here and there, but you know, 250 students from what we thought we were going to get in May and where we were in February is a, is mm -hmm. a big, we're definitely um, erring on the side of budgeting cautiously, right? Like we're not, right. we're really trying to budget conservatively in terms of enrollment predictions. Mm -hmm. The other thing that's unique to districts in Sonoma County who have chartered their schools, so even though they're dependent charter schools next year, those schools are what we call hold held harmless with that enrollment. Right. So we're getting hit with that in four of our schools, whereas the three district schools um, do get to stay steady, um, but they're also the schools that happen to have the stronger enrollment. So <laughs> it's um, it's an interesting jigsaw. Yeah. yeah, I guess what you know the my reason for dialing in today. I've been trying to follow this and follow along. I'm really interested in hearing, you know, obviously the pieces that are going around around the teacher negotiations and like what flexibility we have. And, you know, um, in terms of where we're at with our reserve, um, you said we have to maintain a 3% reserve. The, this, this like, what state is the, minimum? the state requires us to maintain a 3%. But for our size district, what is strongly recommended by school services and capital advisors that our district should actually have a reserve of approximately 17%. Okay. So we're nowhere near the 3%, but we are falling away from the 17. Where are we at now then? If, if, how close to 17 are we? Our, in the third year at the end of uh, January 30, 31st, I believe we're in the 12%. Okay, and then the projections that you were doing, I know you said that it hadn't put, taken into account, uh, hadn't taken into account, you know, what's on the table now for the teachers, but does that take into account the COLA increases that are projected right now by the state, like so that we'd be moving people along in their ranges? Yes, it, okay. it, it, inclu it includes the step in column. Okay. And then my understanding as well is that we haven't done like a, there's, there hasn't been like a compensation study or salary study done uh, for our district, like in terms of developing our ranges and looking at our ranges, like that hasn't been done anytime recently, correct? We did, we did the, uh, we did a, um, uh, a SABER report, which I never heard of until this year, okay. which is a, a report basing our salaries to the uh, Nifty Niners, which I never heard of Nifty Niners until this year. Mm -hmm. uh, to see if our salaries were comparable. So there Nifty, was a study yeah. done. The Nifty Niners are the Santa Rosa districts. The Santa Rosa districts. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm just just curious to see what data you guys are working with and how you're 
you know, where all the numbers are coming from and how often they get updated and all that good stuff. So, yeah. Okay. Thank they, you. It is a little difficult, Beth, just to explain. Like sometimes the dollar, like um, that report was based on 1819, right? Yeah, you, so we yeah. kind of have to predict and project, and we do try to compare data across the districts as much as possible, mm -hmm. but it doesn't always get updated. So the data is um, not aged then for. The so it's coming from 1819. It's not aged. Yeah, I think the 1920 just came out. But even just, now, right? We're still, you know. So it's okay. and, and then different districts settle at different times. So there is market data though, that you guys can look yes. at. As yes, we do. Yes. And that's just for the Santa Rosa, not necessarily statewide. Okay. No, we can do statewide reports as well. Yeah, we can compare as needed. Yeah. yeah. As 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 the um just for as a parent speaking, um, I yeah. think it would be useful to have some of those benchmarks um, shared in some of the communications because, um, you know, it's hard to to know kind of where our teachers are. We're hearing some numbers about where they're at, but you know, locally, it, you know, it'd be curious to see where things are lining up, and you know, are we lagging? Are we at market? You know, are we leading? I mean, it sounds like we're lagging. So, um, just something of concern. So. Absolutely. Yes, thank you. Do you want to call on the hands or you want me to? Go ahead, Alan. Jennifer, you want to uh, take Jennifer first and then Sheila afterwards? Yeah, I want to go back to the 3% versus 17% reserve. Yes. Um, that's a fairly significant gap there. What, and if it's recommended that it's 17%, say you only keep 12 percent what's going to happen like walk me through a scenario um what, what the I'll, I'll go through a worst case scenario we have a reserve of let's say eight million dollars and one of our schools burns down uh our deductible is five million dollars for that school and that's what our reserve would pay for to have that school built that's kind of a worst case scenario um, the other thing is if there is an economic downturn for three years, your reserves would be gone in three years if you maintain the same caliber of uh, expenses. Did that help? I lost her. Yes. Um, no, that's good. I just wasn't sure what a worst case scenario was. And yeah, $5 million deductible, that's significant. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I do worry about that for the last half of the year. Every year, the last two years now, is what our deductible is. And it went through the roof back in October of 19. It was my first month here when I found out what the deductible was going to be for the next couple of years. Our insurance went through the roof, too, because of it. Um, but that's part of building a budget what our expenses are going to be. Sheila, next. Hi, yeah, I'm going back on the similar thoughts of, I think it would be helpful for parents and community member community members to know, or I guess paint a picture regarding um, teachers and staff salaries and benefits of, so that, th that we know the same source um, and maybe like a trend line, Line, for example, I'm not sure if all parents um, are going to open up, you know, the document that, you know, that it was a great document of like explaining what happened last year, what was going on or is currently happening this year with the negotiations, but just so that it's clear that um, we can see has the district contributed more or, you know, um, you know, what, what, what is that line? I guess just the data points of knowing and then also um, the benefits, because I think that was a, is another big question that people don't understand. I think you explained it uh, a little bit about um, for, for retirement, like the stir, I guess you called it stirs and purrs. But I think um, just a snapshot of that data, um, it was something that I actually was asking for from the teachers and I couldn't um, from some of the uh, teachers on a Facebook page because it's really difficult to know like where we are and what numbers that we're all using the same numbers. So I guess, is that study available that uh, the 1920 or could we pull 
things from the statewide or countywide or comparison to Santa Rosa or what have you. Um, I did find something on California, I guess it was the California Department of Education. Um, and then there's, but then they show you the different types of schools. Are it elementary? Is it unified? Is it high school? So um, those were some of my questions, like where's this, you know, where are these comparisons coming from that I was seeing that how do we compare against state, the state um, salaries, the average salary. And then it also needs to be clear if the district or the teachers, whoever want to put something together that it's FTE only, like are we, you know, how are these numbers being created? Is it part-timers with full-time? It just needs to be very clear data sourced so that um, everyone has a clear picture. Cause I know, I, I think there's a lot of questions. Did you wanna say something, Tracy? I do, I'm gonna actually share a screen and you, I would love it if you would tell me that this would be helpful or not. Beth, I think I shared this with you last time we talked. Um, I'm not sure, let me take a look. Did I share the, bank, the, the bargaining anchors? Here, I'm gonna, I'll, let me. Yeah, I, I do think you forwarded this, yeah. Okay, so, um, here we go. Um, so these are some preparations. This is comparing us with different um, elementary districts. So that kind of speaking to what Sheila was saying about comparing, comparing high school districts to elementary districts, et cetera. And so these were the elementary districts within Sonoma County. Mm -hmm. um, and there are several anchors in here that talks about our percentage of total general fund expenses, some salary comparisons, um, sal sal salary settlements over the years, competitive rankings. So these would be all things that the district would um, take into consideration. I hope you can see these um, over the next, uh, you know, as we make decisions and then we look at the reserve, what's the impact of an agreement? What's the COLA? Um, the May revise really gives us a lot of great information to determine. Um, and one of our biggest uh, challenges, of course, has to do with the enrollment and the prediction of how that could impact us. Um, but here, you know, just different percentages with comparative groups. But see here, the source was 1819. So this yeah. would be the one, the parts where I, I would want to update this to be 1920 before I'd send it out. So it could, we could compare, you know, some of the yeah. most recent data. Yeah, uh, summary so, data is always a year behind. So at right. least a year. Yeah. Two. It, yeah. Yeah. So it's still, but it, 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 it gives a little bit more um, of a perspective that could be, could be helpful. Um, I'm sorry, let me stop sharing. Um, I did have a question, Alan, about the benefits rate. So I call it a burden rate. I don't know what you call it, but um, you know, what's the markup on the benefits expense for medical retirement and all those things for like on average for the district? Like if you were to say it's an additional 40% on top of salary or do you have that rate? Uh, I, I have what is cost for the district for a certificated employee uh, for 2021 was 19.38%. Okay. And for a classified employee for 2021 was 30.13% 30 for a 1.0 FTE. For one plan. Not that I have it on my wall or anything. All right, thank you. You're welcome. So with those with those bargaining anchors that I shared, I, they go on and on, and there's some graphs. They're not they don't go on and on, but there's probably 23 pages. Um, I have a feeling that Sheila, you're looking for something a little more simplistic. <laughs> that might be too much. Yeah, I think. Well, that's a start. Um, but yeah, I think for most people that I know that you know are not reading all of this, but but. Um, yeah, just a general overview, even if it's just like the fat that last five years of, you know, like if the insurance like the benefits are costing more, you know, it's, it's not unlike like in Sonoma County or Santa Rosa, the government or any other nonprofit or business, you know, those, the benefits do seem to be like they're, you know, 
always increasing. And if our budget is, you know, and then show that in, rel uh, in relation to the budget, which uh, may not necessarily be keeping up with those particular expenses. And then I, I think it's really important. I mean, surely everyone knows that it's mostly personnel that's our budget, but it, I, I think I got that it's like 85%, right? Our, um, just to, to keep it going. So that's, you know, that's a, a lot. <laughs> so, um, you know, I think, yes. Yeah, so I guess more, uh, some simple things um, might be good for people to um, kind of put that together. Uh, but that is interesting. I will say about the, uh, the, the insurance and if something were to happen, um, that's pretty serious um, that we need, you know, at least in my opinion, that we need to be ready to have a reserve for things that happen. And I, I honestly, I won't be surprised if enrollment drops further um, for next, for the fall. And we're not gonna, it's not gonna, we're not gonna get the funding, right? That we were just guaranteed this year, so. And we do have that, we do have those enrollment numbers budgeted conservatively. Um, just yeah. Just so you know, yeah. Okay, well, if there's no more questions or comments, um, we want to thank everybody for being here. Um, we will um, get this sent out. Um, I hope to send out a little newsletter on Friday um, for some updates and um, we'll go from there. So thanks everybody for coming. Thank you, Alan and Kathy and Mike for helping. And, and my, I want to mention Mike Cook is here. Hi, Mike. Thanks for Hi, being Mike. here. Yeah. Right. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.